this is your loin. It can be treated like a loin roast and be cut into larger sections and cooked like that. And usually if you were to cut this uh, in a three to five pound section for a nice family roast, you'd put the bone on it, you'd have the bone down, you'd have a skin and the back fat still on it, you'd score your skin, score some of your fat, and then let it cook in your oven. And all the fat is just marinating the meat the whole time. It's really wonderful. You turn it up on on oil at the end, all the skin will crisp up. So you've got this super juicy meat, this wonderfully soft, functions fat, and this crispy skin on the top. It's like something ma ma in your mouth. Um, but uh, that's at the expense of pork chops, right? Because your loin roast is a whole bunch of pork chops that haven't been cut up yet. Um, these, if they were to be separated, because you would have boneless um, chops or boneless wood roast, these would be your bacon back ribs. Right. So again, it's, you're kind of always having to think about what you're going to you know, make for decisions. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. There isn't a wrong answer. There's often this like, oh, geez, I wasn't ready for this. I didn't, I didn't know where you were <coughs> Every single yeah. time. But it's okay, because the thing that you're going to end up with is just going to be excellent. It's never going to be a lesser quality thing. It's just going to be a different thing. Right. You can always cut so, a roast into chops too. That's right. Yeah. Or you're not having all of one, you know. You, you have the other half, so you exactly can make right. half. You know, that's exactly. a good thing about it, I think. So this guy, uh, and this is how I like to kind of massage people's decision because this is sometimes overwhelming for folks. They want this. All There's the something really wonderful all about right. a bone-in chop. I mean, the bone-in chop is hard to beat, okay? but. Uh, what I just described about a loin roast is like, you can't even buy that in a store. You can't get a skin on, back fat on, heritage loin roast, period. So you can do both and. Not just with, because you have two halves, but your ribs stop here. Right? So you can do rib chop, rib chop, rib chop, rib chop, all the way to here, and then you end up with this really nice section of loin without the ribs. You can then do your loin roasts. Either one really nice one for like, you know, a Christmas party, or two smaller ones for the family. Mm -hmm. right. So that's how we try to encourage people because it's, it gives you both worlds. And then you can do that type of both halves. So you end up with lots of chops and then a couple really nice roasts. So you have that decision, or we can bone it out and go in the direction. Last one, not bone it out, but take your chops from here and then make that two smaller roasts. Bone in the chops. Bone in. Less. Bone in. Bone in chops from here, and then two smaller chops. Two smaller roasts. Great. Um, yeah, that's easily done. Um, so this side, uh, you can see the feather bones are like split right in the center here. Uh, so we're super close to, to perfect, which is great. The other thing, I talked about this a little bit yesterday, I'm sure Andy did too, in like isolated yeah. pockets. Um, if you read up on how to butcher your own animal, um, whether that's uh, with really good books, uh, including anything by Adam <laughs> Van Gorg, he's got some excellent butchery books. Uh, you can YouTube it all day long, um, or just read varying blogs. There will invariably be uh, a whole list of things you're going to need, like knives. There'll be so many knives and cleavers and saws and everything. Um, Andy and I will typically just use a knife for this entire day. Like we don't have any real investment in an arsenal. When we bring other knives, it's actually just so everyone here has a knife to be using. You know, it's not because we need a breaking knife for this and a fillet knife for this and a chef's knife for this. We'll use our knife on our person for the whole thing. The only exception, the only exception, is when we will bring this knife, which we also use for the head, we use for the primal, which I didn't even do today, right? I use this knife for that. When I cut all the way through the belly or all the way through the loin, the only other time that I would choose to use this knife is for this cut, for the ribs. So what it does is it allows me to go through all the way and then go straight to the table with nice, clean cuts, and I don't end up with any swiping of any kind. So the thing about the ribs, and I'm going to show everybody before I even get started, because it is a little tricky. The ribs, they start out relatively straight, right? But then they start curving. And as they curve, it makes your, your pork chops a little bit more difficult to maintain evenness. Now, it does not matter if you have a one-inch chop or one-and-a-quarter-inch chop as far as 
your own personal preference of palate. Because uh, your rib is going to determine the thickness to a large extent. What you don't want is a like trapezoid. You don't want a tapered chop because it won't cook evenly. You want it to be able to cook evenly. So the most important thing is not that they all stay the same size. It's that each chop is consistent. And that's the correct. So what I like to do is I'll come through and I'll hug like one side of the rib on the one side, yeah, sorry, it's really tough, tough. I'll see it way back here, maybe. I'll come through, over here, they're a little straighter, so it's easier. When I get over here and the ribs start to get a little bit more uh, diagonal, I'll stay on the, this side of this rib and this side of this rib. So I can still try to maintain a, a relatively parallel cut as I go, so I don't end up cattywampus chops. Oh, sure. But that does sound like something you, it does sound like something you'd find on a bougie menu. <laughs> Caddy Wampus Strauss, fourteen ninety nine. I don't think Caddy Wampus has a name. Sure it's on that. Oh. Yeah, so we do have a. Okay. So you come now under the giant bone. It's correct. Yeah, which is what needs to be chopped later, right? Which is how this particular cut got its name. So is that how it's got its name? Pork chop. Yeah, yes, exactly right. Because the only good way to do this is to finish your cut with a cleaver. So the ribs are getting the yeah, medial top yeah. right now, right? So I'm hugging the, the inside of this one. I ran them right from my library. Down yeah. here, and this one up here. And that way I can stay pretty well parallel as I go. Yeah, New Hampshire has a New Hampshire audio, an audio library. So like if you're, I'm assuming the library is up here. When I was a member of the library in Nashua, yeah. it gave you access to the New Hampshire audio library. And they won't just tug your comfort books. Yeah. Need to go get my own local library card now. And, if, and if, they, if they don't have something, you can usually request it. Yeah. Oh, cut right into the table. No, I'm not. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm not. It's, 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 it's right. Somebody said that, they commented that. I'm like, that just adds character and adds patina over the years as the chop into a cut and boil. No, it really will. No. Like with a, with a oh, once you re-oil it, oh, it looks beautiful after. Almost conditioned. You're doing a favor. So you're also trying to get between the feather bones? Correct, yeah. The, that is, is nearly a fool's errand, so we don't really work. Worry about it, right? So yeah. there are a number of different things. This can be solved now. If we wanted to, we could just solve it right now. Or we flip the whole thing over, put it on there. And take the library is free. Free. So now, uh, now it's kind of the fun part. Um, it, it's kind of just like cleaning the casings. Uh, it's, it's usually somebody in the room's sweet spot. Um, I'm not accusing you of loving what you did yesterday. Not bad, I, but I'm you not, did it. That's yeah, no, it was that's the job I can handle. So. Yeah, well, and the same is true with the with the loin chopping. Where were we? Oh man, it was a couple weekends ago. I don't know if it was in front of some chefs that we did a demo for, or at the farm where they brought a pig over. But the, the wife, man, like. No one else in the room should have had a cleaver but her. Like she was, she you was every it. single time, and it was like she was just in the zone. She'd never done it before. But like every swing was true, and her 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 strike, like every one of them mattered. We have people that don't know how to use this, and they think that the objective is to see how much of it they get bury in the table. <laughs> you know, and it often won't even do its job. You know, so when you have a like. Typically, yeah. people like to yeah. right. no, 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 cut like, like that, just, like, but there's not control and then that way. So we tell people, if you're going to use it, you know, aim for the, the, the heel, not not the toe, and come down at it. So you know, just cut across it, and then you're cutting it out afterwards or whatever. Is it covered I, I am not. To be honest with you, I'm not awesome with this. Which is why I was so impressed with her, because I do this all the time. What I don't want, and this is why it's kind of critical, is I don't want to go through 
That's just going to happen. <laughs> oh, it is. I don't want to go through the loin. So the other thing is, and I almost brought one, but a mallet, if you have a mallet, you can also finish it by using the mallet. Oh, man. I was going to say, After nice the first maple, one, maple mallet on the top yeah, of that. Right. Nice. I know. I actually started making one the other day. Uh, it did <laughs> blow ham like this. Right. Or it did blow. Alright, so, yeah, so that's a huge chop, but then, then that gets chined off, right, so the very next stage, and I don't have to do all these, but the very next stage is taking the chine off, which is just that bone, and that can typically be done with one swipe, that's, that's way easier, um, and if it, if it turns out, to be the bone-in rib chop, clean that bone. Sometimes yeah, this, I mean, depending on how you feel about it, this is a little less attractive than the other end of the loin, where the eye gets bigger and you don't have the muscle groups that are separated by the patient. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I say it depends on how you feel about it, because some people are like, no, this is the chop I want. Yeah. Uh, there's also, uh, we haven't really talked about it yet, can you see that seam right there? Yeah. That's, this is the actual back fat, or fat cap, right? This fat is a different fat than this fat, right? It has a different consistency, it's much firmer. Um, if you wanted, you could easily separate the entire fat cap from the rest of the pig with, with your hand. So you could, take, you could take even the carcass and get your hand or fist in there and work the whole fat cap away along that seam. Um, it doesn't you can have. See the whole line. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it is very evident in, in every know. pig. It's like that. Yeah. But in in this particular pig, uh, where that fat cap line is is a really nice marker for about where they're going to want their fat for the chops. So as long as I'm pretty close to that marker, uh, I'll probably have the right amount of fat on. Something like yay. Yes, yes? Yes. Oh, so I like to start, uh, when I skin this, I do it very similar to a fish. I won't do it at the end, because that's just too much work. So I start here, and I, and I get a good start, and then I can grab this little piece that I just started and hold it the rest of the way. You can also uh, hold your knife and pull back, but I kind of do it exactly like I would flay a fish. And I've got this great fat here. Flip that around and finished it. Yeah. Alright.